Well, here we are again, and uh, in this video I'd like to uh, focus on the uh, standard routine histopathology of the glioblastoma tumor, and then uh, try to uh, interpret some of the staining that we have for the cellular makeup of the tissue. The classic glioblastoma multiforme uh, has vascular proliferation, so we see the pink color here surrounding the blood vessels, the thickened basement membrane, of course, um, and great increased uh, cellularity, so quite obviously you know all the blue dots are nuclei. And there can be sites of necrosis, of course, and the cells close to that will be palisading away. So we have the necrosis sites, the, the uh, palisade, the pseudopalisades, uh, and then neoplastic cells. And uh, these are the zones where we would, the, in these neoplastic areas, we would expect to see the, uh, the KI-67 staining for the mitotically active cells. And then we can see some uh, of those here. It's a metaphase, am I remembering it correctly? Uh, and then, of course, the uh, endothelial cells showing the proliferation. So there'd be a plug of endothelial cells. And, of course, nearby, the uh, cannulation will open them up into the regular vasculature, so they would look very normal. So we begin to challenge ourselves to recognize where do the endothelial cells end and then the cells on the surface of them. Uh, this might be one of the big cells up there, but uh, we'll see. So with uh, cultured cells, uh, there are uh, characteristic features. So um, the small rounded cells presenting blebs and filopodia, and then the dendritic cells with the extensive uh, cytoplasmic uh, prolongations that we see here, and then the, focusing in on the tip of one here, but it flattens out. Uh, and then the area in rectangle that we looked at that. Uh, and then finally the uh, spindle-shaped uh, fibroblast-like cells uh, with microvilli on their surface. So we'll come back and revisit this. Uh, we seem to see the same population and uh, identified with the markers uh, in your study. So the classic cell types uh, in the uh, glioblastoma are the gemistocytes. Um, and these are considered to be uh, enlarged astrocytes, small cells, uh, the giant cells. We can see different views of the giant cells here, a little bit of text on that. Characteristic of the grade 4 tumor, but uh, um, not always uh, predominant, but certainly there probably will be uh, some scattered uh, throughout. Uh, and then some spindle-shaped cells in the oligodendroglial area. And, of course, we see the necroses again. So characteristic uh, traditional uh, uh, pathological descriptions of the cell types, uh, the cytology within glioblastoma, and the uh, fibronectin staining in our hands. Of course, others. This is from the company website for this antibody. Uh, they only see the fibronectin in the, uh, the vasculature, not within the cells. Our stain is uh, throughout, and so um, I'm uh, concluding that we're seeing the small and spindle-type cells, if they're distributed throughout like that. Sorry, not spindle. Um, these uh, dendritic cells with the uh, filopodia. So not the spindle type uh, type shell cells, uh, <clears throat> the uh, ones with the filopodia, and quite obviously staining uh, in the basement membrane of the uh, blood vessels, and probably from the uh, uh, endothelial cells as well. At a, a higher magnification, we see some of these filopodia in the smaller cells. Uh, you can see little. Uh, they called them microvilli in the in vitro ones, but anyway, um, let me fix my pointer here. You can look around to to see how these. Is this a giant cell? Is this a giant cell? 
Not sure what that is. That's a giant cell for sure, but I, I don't know what, what's staining. Might be something on the surface of it. And then the uh, Vimentin, of course, we're looking at site one now. Uh, this seems to be widespread. If all this is positive staining, um, I don't know what your antibody is specific to, but there are many different forms of Vimentin and uh, you know cleavage peptides. Um, that seems to be a nuclear stain. Mostly I pay my attention to uh, all of these uh, fibrous uh, processes. Those coming from astrocyte type cells. You know, are these astrocyte type cells, the small ones? Uh, again, site one. Um, are these the small cells? Well, that's site two. But the, uh, the site one is showing them as well. Um, are some of these smaller cells also containing fibronectin? And uh, of course, the site one with the nestin staining, we see the, the giant cells for sure. Um, this might be an oligo uh, in the progression of differentiating. Uh, saw that before. Is this migrating away? Got a hold of an axon? Are these probing for axons? Uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about those a little bit more. Um, are any of those undergoing uh, mitosis? Is this a giant cell? Is that a giant cell? You know, but if you did a dual stain, would they look like this with nestin? Uh, these are the questions we want to ask. And so in my mind, um, these are the giant cells that are nestin positive that are migrating away um, along the uh, white matter tracks, along axons. And uh, what about uh, uh, these uh, other uh, group that are following the vasculature? Well, first, before leaving this site one with the, uh, the Vimentin staining, I'm just curious whether you know, I just traced out in Photoshop <clears throat> one of the giant cells with stained for nestin. Is nestin within the proximal processes and then vimentin would be in the distal processes. There's a lot of uh, uh, information in the literature about an interplay between nestin and vimentin. Actually they will bind together um, and they are uh, they, they stay associated with each other through the full um, cell cycle when there's cell division, except during certain stages of mitosis. I mean, they attach to the nucleus as well, the caging, nuclear cage, but then all of that dissolves uh, and it's regulated with phosphorylation and things like that. So if you had an antibody to phosphorylated um, nestin, and uh, uh, pretty sure nestin was the one that was phosphorylated, you know, that might be specific for different phases of uh, cell division and things of that nature. Um, <clears throat> a lot of ways of beginning to, <clears throat> excuse me, ask questions ab about these cell types. You know, those that are dividing are the targets. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, those that migrate slightly away from the tumor and don't get resected are the targets for the therapy to um, extend the uh, uh, the survival periods. But uh, I mean, look at these long processes. They're just amazing. If we go back up here. To this look at this one seems to come off there's a little break there pick it up again pick it up again and it's going out is that all one process how far out do these uh, processes extend from these cells it's just amazing I'd love to be able to have somebody fill these cells and just see them in 3d what are they doing Uh, so uh, this is uh, from another article where they uh, implanted in in rats um, and they stain for vimentin and nestin. Uh, my proximal distal uh, theory doesn't seem to be holding too tightly here. Even here we see the processes extending way out uh, for the vimentin stain. Uh, the nestin seems to go out a little bit too. So there might be uh, more overlap than what we think. Uh, <clears throat> and an interplay that's more critical at the nucleus level <clears throat> and then playing different roles uh, farther out. Again, they're reaching out, and here it looks like they're reaching out into the white matter, um, following axons, uh, and they're going to you know, team up to uh, pull the nucleus way out there of some migratory cell. Look at the cells migrating at the edge, right? Uh, these cells here, 
for Vimentin <clears throat> look very reminiscent of this cell type here. So is this a progressive series of events that we're seeing? And some other markers uh, that you might consider uh, to put all this together. Some nice uh, immunofluorescence with confocal, 3D imaging. Oh, that would be fantastic. So now what about site two? What cell types are we seeing there? <clears throat> well, the nestin staining, when I first saw this, I immediately said this blood vessel is just coated with uh, nestin positive cells, tumor cells on the surface of it. Just jumped into my mind immediately, especially seeing the, those green illustrations before of knowing the cells were migrating on the surface uh, of these. Um, and we'll debate, are these endothelial cells or are they on the surface of the endothelial? Which side of the basement membrane are they actually on? Uh, here from a study in rodents, of course, uh, <clears throat> uh, doing the KI-67 and a CD3, I guess, labeling the blood vessels, you can see the dividing cells migrating on the blood vessels. Uh, so it's all very consistent with uh, what we've uh, observed. Um, you know, there's other cells out here. They just plane of section. This might have been a, a lying on the surface of another blood vessel that's in the next section coming at us. Um, that looks like a different cell type uh, altogether. Uh, but you know, we don't can't expect total uniformity of the and homogeneity of the cell types. But definitely in this site too, we're seeing uh, the nexin on the blood vessels. Um, whether it's endothelial cells or the tumor cells on the surface. Let's uh, see what other people have found. <clears throat> well, here's a, a study in 2002, lab investigations. They think that it's only on the endothelium. So they see it with the blood vessels, and they just are concluding, you know, can't really make it out with their fuzzy uh, images uh, to differentiate it. But this study um, in... Uh, pathology Research and Practice in uh, 2011, it's uh, volume 2007, uh, they stained for GFAP and the nestin and the periodic, periodic uh, acid shift, the PAS stain, so the basement membrane stands out nicely. And uh, they see the tumor cells uh, uh, surrounding the vessels, and they uh, refer to it as a vasculogenic uh, mimicry. Uh, so the GFAP staining uh, on the outside of those cells, and then here the nestin, it's not the greatest. Uh, this is a 1000x mag. It's a little fuzzy from the copying the image and stuff like that. But here you can see that the nestin staining cells are actually on the outside of the basement membrane. Um, can't really make out the endothelial cells. They're showing an endothelial cell here, I guess. Um, <clears throat> But uh, this pretty clearly shows that these are uh, the nestin staining cells are on the outside of the basement membrane. So my conclusion is uh, site two uh, nestin staining are revealing this characteristic type of cell here. So what about the uh, Ki uh, sixty seven staining? Um, do we see that on the surface? Well, we don't see it too much in the endothelial cells here. In this third site, you know, the, these are definitely endothelial cells. We can make out the, the basement membrane there. These are probably larger uh, blood vessels. Um, and uh, those are definitely endothelial cells uh, that we would see there. <clears throat> but in the, in the other area, this is kind of the, what we'd see. I don't see a lot of it. It'd be nice if we had a branching point on a blood vessel to see if there were some dividing cells there. That tended to be the spot where uh, they'd stop and divide. Um, but here's our uh, Philopodia cells again uh, that we recall from the fibronectin. So do we have Ki67 in these same cells where we have the fibronectin? Are these fibronectin Philopodia type of cells uh, um, dividing. Right? So here's the uh, type of cell we're talking about, the dendritic cell as it's called there. And the vimentin uh, and the fibronectin look very much alike. And this is very reminiscent of a cell type, the um, 
another type of ependymal cell, specialized tannocyte. And, you know, 